Okay. All right, so we have about one more minute left, so I think it's a good time to get started. Um, and yeah, here we go. I'm going to turn off the, the chat right now. I'm going to make it private. So if you have any questions during the presentation, you can still ask them in the chat and we'll address them in the Q&A session at the end. All right, so I'm going to turn off my camera here and let's get started. Okay, so the name of this training is The Proven Path to Become a World-Class 3D Games Artist, Achieve Your Life Purpose, and Make Sure Your Digital Art is Never Ignored Again. As I said, you're in for a great training and workshop today. Stay until the end if you can. The total runtime won't be that long at all. And a reminder, I'll be doing a live portfolio review and art feedback session in the Q&A section at the end. If you have 3D art you want some expert advice on, I'm happy to give you a little mini mock recruiter review. And if we're just meeting for the first time, here's a quick introduction. My name is Eddie Faria. I'm based here in, in Toronto, Canada. I've been in the game art industry as a professional for around 13 years uh, and 15, including my college years where I taught in college. I've worked at AAA studios like Ubisoft, um, Indie Studios, and I did some free, freelance work as well. So I've helped create games that did very well and also some that didn't do very well. I've been a uh, 3D artist working mostly in environments. I've been an art lead, art director, project manager, and an animator throughout my career. I also taught in the college system for about four years, teaching courses from intro to advanced levels. But uh, I'm glad I'm not teaching in colleges anymore because the days of expensive game arts college education, I believe, are going to be a thing of the past for many reasons. So the timing of my teaching career shift seems divinely aligned looking back now. And uh, I'm sure you also see that the economic times are vastly changing. School uh, debt for college might have been a wise investment in my days, but now it's not so much for yours. Uh, just imagine a college classroom experience nowadays where you can't come within six feet of anyone. So this is a very powerful image, and I think it, it really says it all. Um, when we're considering the potential health risks, the whole college experience is looking less and less appealing from my perspective anyways. Would you really want to go into like deep, unforgivable student loan debt to for this? So my mission is to create a world-class game art school online that offers more relevant industry content and a supportive community that delivers a better learning experience than any of the college programs out there and for a small fraction of the investment and uh, offers students coaching and mentoring to figure out how this art form helps them tap into their, their purpose in life. Um, so this is really where my career started shifting a lot. I really started believing that like, um, I'm not in 3D art just to create pretty pictures, but also to dive deep into my life purpose and what my soul wants to do on this planet. So um, the main reason I created this online training and this Game Arts Academy are, um, I was frustrated with seeing talented students fail. Uh, as a college teacher, I saw way too many students fall through the cracks. Many of them finished school, but still lacked the industry standard skills but um, also the interpersonal inner game skills and mindset they needed to win. Many students in these college programs really shouldn't have been even allowed into, into them, but uh, nobody tells them that when they're borrowing the money to enroll. Uh, I also love to teach and always wanted to create my own curriculum. And I've discovered that part of my life's purpose is to help others connect with their life's purpose through visual storytelling. And I think we can all agree here that that's what games can do better than anything else, is tell profound stories in an engaging and interactive way. Some of the most profound insights and lessons I've ever experienced have been, reached me through the stories I've read and consumed in books and games. One of my goals is helping young people like you become competent and courageous heroes of your own life who make games that teach, heal, and preserve the culture and stories of our ancestors and create a better world as a result. I'm a big advocate of personal growth and self-transformation. And I love seeing students overcome obstacles, grow and become better artists. Part of my mission in life is to help ambitious game art students like you 
make it up the mountain and avoid the pitfalls. So ambitious and naive students usually fail in this field because they adopt one of two extremes when it comes to building skills and creating 3D art that gets them hired. On the one hand is the undercommitted resources. Uh, the other one is overcommitting resources. These are the three most common mistakes I've seen aspiring digital artists make that leave them discouraged, unmotivated, and defeated after a perceived failure. So I'll give you a quick five minute overview of how this works by showing you a case study from one of our top students, Sarim Ali. But just before we do that, I wanna cover what doesn't work and why it doesn't work. One of the two extreme students take is the undercommitted option. This is where they try to do everything on their own to, point, uh, to the point of hurting themselves. They, uh, and you, you guys may have done this already too. You mash up all the free videos you can find on the internet and make what I call a Frankenstein curriculum based on what you think they, uh, you should learn. And um, also doing this with zero guidance from a mentor or coach. I call this unsuccessful option the all ambition and no advice strategy. Uh, it may save, you may save some money doing this, but this approach always costs tons of time and energy and wasted time and energy often costs you way more than just money. It's not impossible. I've seen some really ambitious students do this, um, but there are some real risks with this undercommitted approach. On the flip side, uh, ambitious young artists go the other overcommitted end of the spectrum and put all their faith into an overpriced college game art program. And most of them go into massive high risk debt to do this. So every community college around offers some type, some type of digital art program nowadays. Like there's a lot, almost all of them have a 3D program now. Uh, most of these programs are outdated and are spread way too thin. And, but they always seem to get a steady flow of students because no one really knows that there's a better, more cost-effective option. And because most people don't know any better, they rely on the traditional path that their parents took uh, at high school, college, job, and end up twenty, thirty, or even forty thousand dollars or more. I've even seen like sixty or seventy thousand dollars in student loan debt that they can never claim bankruptcy to get out of. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know that in the in Canada and the U.S., student loan debt is the one debt that you can never claim bankruptcy from? It really blew my mind when I learned that. So as soon as you're done school, your debt becomes due and you have to start paying it off. From then on, for the, for the next few decades, you could expect to pay anywhere between $250 to $400 a month or more. Um that eats up a lot of your free time that you could be investing, mastering your art and building your, your career. So both extremes options suck. At least the first one only takes your invested time. This debt option is also very painful if you uh, can never make it into a fulfilling career. And whatever they choose, many game art students believe this common path of learning game art, then getting a job at a AAA studio and making games will leave them fulfilled. And often it doesn't. I can tell you this from my own experience working at AAA. Either way, whichever of these two poor choices they make, they end up feeling burned out and discouraged when they honestly try their best and still fail and don't know what they did wrong or what they could have done better. But um, there's a way better strategy than these two common paths. And when you use it, you can seriously increase your chances of success in this industry. For example, here's a short story and case study of one of my first students at Game Arts Academy, uh, Sarim Ali. Sarim was one of those uh, one of my students way back when I was teaching game art at a college downtown Toronto. I actually taught him in his second year. He was pretty mediocre upon graduating his three-year program, but uh, definitely didn't have the skills or the confidence to get into the games industry like he dreamed of. He came to me with some decent base skills but was feeling unsatisfied with his career. He was working at a 3D architecture uh, company, and but he, he wasn't happy. So he was doing 3D, but he just wasn't happy. He joined my 1.0 Game Arts Academy bootcamp, and I taught him exactly what he needed to know to land a job at a AAA studio. And I also taught him exactly why he had not been successful up until that point. You can see here uh, his 3D portfolio before he joined Game Arts Academy. You know, like you can see his lighting skills were lacking. 
His art really didn't tell a compelling story. He had average texturing skills, and uh, what you see here was done to the best of his ability, given his experience at the time. Here's some more of the art he made in college. Um, so I'll, I'll throw it to you guys. Like, what what do you guys think of uh, of this art? Can you see? Can you give any like criticisms or uh, critiques on it? Like, what do you guys think? What's what do you think is is lacking about it or is missing? Let me know in the chat there. <laughs> Duncan says no comment. Uh, emotion is just techniques. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, let me know in the chat. As I'm kind of reviewing this art, let's 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 have a little bit of uh, interactivity here with each other. Let me know what you guys think of the stuff that I show you. So we'll just move on to the next one. So here's another piece that he did, and you can see that it's it's also interesting. It's like a futuristic kind of scene. Uh, I personally think the lighting's kind of lacking. It feels a little bit flat to me. Um, it, the composition is a little jumbled with a lot of really dark areas and bright spots. What do you guys think? You, any any feedback on this piece here? What do you think could have been uh, could have been done better, or how do you think he could have improved that? So Angel Angel says I like the block out. So yeah, I agree. I think it's like I would say it's at it looks like it's at a block out stage. It doesn't look kind of it doesn't look finished. Is my is my th main thing. So let's take a look at another one he did. This is his Batmobile. So it's really good. I think like he did a really good job on this one. Um, I personally feel that he could have pushed it further. He could have like lit it a little bit better. He could have made a little scene around it. Um, the materials could have been better. You can see that even the tires and the the armor kind of feel like the same. They're made of the same material. There's no real differentiation between material types. Um, Kay Kaylee says his lighting makes his scenes feel flat. Yeah, I think lighting was one of his biggest weaknesses. And let's. But uh, when he joined Game Arts Academy and started to do exactly what we showed him in the Advanced Environment Mastery course and boot camp coaching program, he learned exactly what he was doing wrong and started making big improvements the right way. He applied the current industry techniques I taught him and used this new understanding to improve one of his best vehicle models that you just saw and make a brand new environment flagship uh, piece. So we just saw that Batmobile. Now take a look at this one. So what do you guys think of his new Batmobile after he worked with us here at Game Arts Academy? Do you see, do you see any difference in what we had before to what he has now? What do you guys think? I think like his lighting is, is much, much more improved. It's much more dramatic. Uh, I like the fact that he made a little scene around it. So it's actually sitting on something. It feels like it's a part of a world and not floating in space. Uh, some of the lighting effects on the headlights also look good. But take a look at the materials. So Kaylee says a lot more compelling. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. The materials on the tires and the body look way different now. They, there's a lot more material variety. And you can see a comparison between his old and his new one. So uh, on the right is before we helped him out, and on the left is after. So we gave him some pointers on how to make his portfolio piece a lot better. Kaylee says the materials improved a lot. Uh, I agree, yeah. So uh, check out this one. So this is his Bohemian bedroom environment. Now compare this to like the environments that you just saw, uh, those two environments that he made right after college upon graduating. This is what he made in 14 weeks at uh, Game Arts Academy. What do you guys... What do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of this scene here? I'll, I'll let you guys comment in the comment section there. Just as you guys are watching this stuff, let me know. Let me know what you like about it. Let me know what could be better. I personally think his lighting is dramatically improved. It's like he's, he's telling a lot more story with his props. You can almost feel who lives in this bedroom. Like you don't really need to s explain much about the person. You're, you're already like... Just because of the choice of props, the things on the wall, you kind of know who lives here. Angel says, uh, I really like the way light mixes with the amount of variety of colors and the ropes are so interesting. Uh, Ethan says, feels like that one scene is in the first in the first Last of Us. Yeah, it actually has that quality, right? It looks like a Naughty Dog um, render. So, uh, so I was happy when he made this and it, he was very happy with himself and he was also more proud of his work than he had ever had been. And I'll be honest, it, that I was also really happy with myself because it, he proved 
that my teaching process and the training program would get my students who have followed it the results they were seeking. So uh, here's another shot of that. Um, really interesting, beautiful environment. So the strategy I teach work for him because it's super focused and allows him to concentrate all his efforts on one project that would have the biggest impact on his skills building and portfolio presentation. So he stopped spinning his wheels, doing busy work he thought would uh, and, and he thought would help him and actually was hurt, but was actually hurting him. So the main reason he succeeded was that he stopped doing things by himself and on his own. Uh, he didn't waste his time trying to mash up free tutorials to fill in the gaps of his knowledge and skills with no direction. He was so happy to humble himself and get professional feedback and do exactly what he was instructed to do. Uh, he worked extremely hard and you, you know, you really got to want this if you want to succeed in this industry. And he really, really did. He also invested not just in his education, but his professional network by joining our school. Because I watched him overcome his obstacles and succeeded through the program, I was actually happy to give him access to my professional network when he was finished. I was so confident I could vouch for him that I recommended him to a studio I was connected with and they hired him right away. So his art and his attitude secured his hiring, but it was my introduction and his stellar art that got his foot in the door. Um, he overcame his impulse to do it all by himself and followed our process and he got what he wanted in the end. Uh, he was also honest with himself and he didn't assume that his expensive three-year college education was enough to get him to his final end goal. He could admit that college left him only with introductory level skills and he still had a lot more work to do to hit that advanced level. Very few college graduates ever get hired straight out of a college into studios they want to work at. In my career as a college professor, I, I noticed that it was it was a very rare thing. Uh, maybe one, one or two percent of the class got hired in the studio. It was much easier to get hired out of school back in my day when there was way less competition in the games industry. But nowadays, the game has changed. These days, is it's really as tough as making as a pro athlete, like a pro basketball player. Um, now, you may not know this, but building a world-class 3D environment is one of the most effective ways of getting into the industry because it shows high skill in many areas. And it also shows that you can do exactly what they need you to do. And uh, once you have your foot in the door at a studio, you can then get into character art or other areas of game development you feel called to pursue. Um, advanced 3D environment skills are probably your best foot in the door and entry point into the industry. So overcoming his internal obstacles like self-doubt, staying focused and organized with a clear plan were a big part of Sarim's inner game development. Building his discipline and making an impressive environment helped his self-confidence. And this is ultimately what helped him land his dream job at Get Set Games in Toronto. So AAA and indie companies and freelance clients want to hire confident artists who can deliver. Uh, and he was able to prove in his portfolio that he had what it takes and uh, what employers want. Because he worked through the Advanced Environment Mastery course step by step, leaned on our coaching and peer community for support and feedback, and followed our three-step process to a T, Sarim was able to land himself an awesome job at a very cool studio here in Toronto, negotiate a starting salary higher than he would have on his own, became part of a team making awesome games and a company culture that he absolutely loves. And he set a trajectory for the rest of his career and quality of life and built an off and, and built authentic self-confidence. Here's a summary of what he had to say about following my system for success. I just landed my absolute dream job in the industry and I would not have been able to do it without this course. Game Arts Academy and Advanced Environment Mastery was exactly what I needed to take the next step in my career from an artist working in indie and architecture to working full time out of studio. In order to do this for yourself, there are three steps that you need to follow. The three things we did for Sarim to help him get results are, number one, we took the confusion and mystery out of knowing the correct path to success and helped him understand exactly what it takes to actually succeed in this industry in AAA, indie, or freelance. 
We helped him identify his areas of weakness quickly and develop a custom plan to strengthen them and identify his strengths and develop a plan to leverage and maximize them. Number two, we helped him master the exact skills he needed to build world-class art that speaks for itself and master these skills so we could repeat the process over and over when he does it when he did a new pro, does a new project. He then implemented the step-by-step -step direction and feedback he received from myself and the peer community and built the inner game skills he needed to put himself out there with confidence. So if this is something you want for yourself, grab a pen and a paper. In the, in the rest of our time together, I'm gonna walk you through the three steps we take people through in order to do exactly this. Also, just to let you know, I'm, I'm right now, I'm looking for the next three coaching program students to personally help create art that help launches their careers and gets results like Sarim did. So let me know in the chat if this is something you want help with and uh, I'll personally follow up with you in the Q&A at the end. So let me know in the chat, guys. Is this something that you want for yourself? All right, Angel, yeah, I would like to, that's great. Okay, so for the first step, we're gonna assess where you are right now. If you have some experience, we'll see what portfolio pieces you have and are, we're gonna see if any of those can be polished and salvaged. So you may have already done some work in college and beyond and uh, it's not necessarily throwaway work. Sometimes we look at that work and we assess if it can be saved like Sarim's Batmobile. Um, and also, if you're just getting started, we're gonna help you get started strong on the right foot and headed in the right direction so you make the best of your time and efforts making 3D art. And uh, we're also gonna make the, help you make the best first impression that you can as you connect with others and build your network. Your network is your net worth in many ways in this industry. So invest in it often and really guys, like take your take it seriously. In this first step, I'm gonna help you understand exactly what it takes to actually succeed in the industry, in AAA, indie or freelance. Knowing exactly what to do every step of the way from the first to the final step can be overwhelming and intimidating, but it's simple with our strong start assessment system and success formula framework. I'll take the confusion and mystery out of knowing what the correct path to success is in the industry. I'll help you identify your areas of weaknesses and develop a plan to strengthen them. I will help you identify your strengths and develop a plan to leverage those strengths. We'll also help you identify your other latent talents and how you can use them in combination with your art skills to carve out your own path in the industry. And I'll help you understand why you are not getting work even though you graduated and have an online portfolio. So a lot of uh, even advanced artists that come out of college programs don't understand that they're making subtle errors that they make in the art that recruiters see. So we're going to look at some of this stuff in the portfolio review at the end. So things like poor lighting and presentation skills, having a weak network are all a couple of those things. And if you're just starting out, I'm going to explain why you will likely make the same mistakes these so-called advanced artists make and will likely suffer just as they do. So some of these mistakes that advanced artists make like, are things like giving up too soon, not working on a portfolio piece after college is done to polish their skills. And also, uh, I think we, you guys can relate to this as well, many of us here, doubting that what you're creating in your portfolio is worth continuing because you think it sucks. How many of you guys have that problem here where you, you're working on something and you just don't know, you, you just this sucks. I don't need, this is even worth continuing. It's not going in the right direction. How many of you guys can agree with that? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Many times. Yep. All right, guys. Yeah, for sure. So when this is done, you'll know exactly what to do and in what order. Uh, you will have a workable game plan with clear direction and you will not be confused about anything. So nothing on your journey is ever going to be easy. But after you complete the first step, it's uh, going to be way less overwhelming the rest of the way. You'll have a map that you can navigate that's actually going to make sense. And when this is done right, you won't have to dig yourself out of a hole or make up for lost time and efforts playing catch up later. When you start strong out of the gates with consistent wins, you get momentum that fuels you forward. And then your work, no matter how hard, is way more fun. And overcoming your challenges becomes rewarding and fulfilling. 
So for example, this, an example of this is when you start your project with really great lighting and you start adding props to your scene, everything you add to your environment looks great. And that gives you confidence and a, a boost in morale to keep you moving forward and creating your next props. So uh, a student case study example of this point is one I wanna share you is uh, Griffin Nickel. Uh, Griffin was a typical game art graduate. He came in with uh, very weak lighting skills. He was already he was already a good modeler and texture artist, and I pushed him a little bit further to become a better one. Um, he just didn't have an honest understanding of what he was uh, working with and what he was lacking. And uh, he had been applying at places uh, at game studios, but he wasn't successful because he didn't know what they were looking for and didn't see what mistakes he was making in his artwork. And he didn't know what in his art was ruining him and didn't know the best way to improve. He had been doing his best, but it still wasn't cutting it. So let's take a look at some of his art and see why he wasn't getting any jobs. So here's um, a Ubisoft NXT piece that he did. It's a inside of a submarine. And uh, what do you guys think? What's he lacking in this piece? Like, why, why do you think he's not getting any callbacks or getting hired or any interviews? Like, take a look at this portfolio piece. Like, wh what is it about this that you think is the reason he's not getting hired. And I'll make some comments about it. So, <laughs> Ethan, yeah, the shadows are whack. I, I would agree with that. Take a look how many crisscrossing shadows there are. It really confuses the eye and causes some strange things in the composition. Um, Andrew says, no focal point, the lighting, flat lighting, and it lacks clarity. I would agree with that. Yeah, and Kaylee says the, the lighting needs work for sure. Yeah, lighting was his, one of his weakest areas. And uh, Kaylee also says the material. So everything seems like really just flat and gray and kind of boring. So yeah, good stuff, guys. Really good feedback there. Um, now let's take a look at this other prop. So this is another prop that he had in his portfolio. And um, I don't think it's a bad prop. I think it's pretty good. But, you know, it's it's just not professional. Like, what do you guys think of this prop? Like, what could, what could you have done that's better? Like why, why in his presentation, like what, what is it about this piece that is like really dragging him down? Uh, Angel says, create irregularity in the mesh. Yeah, I think it's like, it's a little too perfect, right? Like from side to side, the sym symmetry could be a little bit. Uh, Andrew says the air edgeware looks generated. Wood grain doesn't follow the object. Absolutely correct, yeah. Angel says maybe some moss would be better. Yeah. So all great points. I also think it's too low poly, right? Like we can see the polygonal edges in it. And nowadays, like you guys are applying for AAA studios, we should never see any polygonal edges in your portfolio pieces ever again. Ethan says the lighting is boring to me. And yeah, I would agree with that. And also take a look at the background. It's like floating in space again on a very blurry background. And I, this is a mistake I see many artists make in presenting marmoset renders, right? You can see a blurry HDR exactly, Angel, in the background. So it just looks, doesn't look really nice. So let's take a look at another one. So here's another piece that he did for a Ubisoft NXT. And uh, what do you guys think? Do you think it suffers from the same problems as the other portfolio pieces? Think about the submarine. Think about like the last one you just saw. Like, Do you see this, some of the same problems here? Yeah, Angel says it's about halfway there. Yeah, I would agree with that. His, the depth of the image, the, the field is strange. Yeah, there's a weird, really weird depth of field thing going on. Andrew says, uh, also textile density and blur. Yeah, it's really blurred very oddly. But also like the lighting, lighting suffers the same problem. It's very flat, very gray. Uh, materials could be better. Composition could be better. Lots of stuff like that. But yeah, he is improving in this piece. Okay, so... He, so Griffin, he, he didn't have any guidance and he simply didn't know what he didn't know. He didn't know what his weaknesses were and didn't know how to strengthen them. And it wasn't, he wasn't really clear on his strengths and didn't know how to leverage those strengths. But uh, through his work with us, he got on the right path and focused his efforts in the right direction. He built on his strengths and strengthened his weak areas to make the exceptional artwork you see here. So this is his new piece after joining our school and it's called the Orient Express. And uh, so what do you guys think of this piece? Do you think like he vastly improved his skills? Like, uh, what do you think of, what do you think of this one? 
how is this better than his old stuff? And Angel says, like, it seems like senior level work. And I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I've seen this. It's very nice. Kaylee says, uh, Ethan says, I love the rain on the window. And Kaylee, the lighting is great. So we can see that his main issue was lighting before and composition. And uh, his images felt very flat and gray. But now he has more depth to his images. There's They're, they're a lot more pleasant looking. And um, he, he he's, he's now at a pro level. And so uh, as I coached him, I, I noticed these things. I noticed Griffin that he was a diligent worker and I watched his skills improve. So over time, I became confident in him and I was happy to connect him with a paid environment art job on an indie game project that I was art directing. So here's some of his of Griffin's newest work. This, he, he literally did this like maybe a month ago. So this is a game, an unannounced project that's actually a game that he got paid for to create. So Griffin actually did the environment in this piece. So what do you guys think of this, uh, this, this piece? Would you play this game? Does it, you look like his, uh, he's applying his skills in an effective way. Yeah. I like it. Angel says, I like, I like it too. I think he did a really good job on this piece. So, um, I can honestly like vouch for his strengths and he, he could finally present him as a pro. Uh, so it was easy for me to introduce him as a competent artist for the position. Um, he did such a great job in this vertical slice for this game that he's almost guaranteed to be brought on full time uh, on the team. So this is what Griffin had to say. Through Game Arts Academy, I learned the skills I needed to take my student level work to a more professional looking and employable standard. If you have the time to dedicate to it and the drive to better your portfolio, taking part in this course makes it much easier to work efficiently. So there are a number of things we do in this first step to get students on the right path. And we're going to take a right step in the rec right direction together right now. So everything we teach is very action focused and results oriented. So I want to challenge you right now to start on this uh, and take a few quick but high value actions over the next five to 10 minutes. So I see a lot of 3D artists portfolio these days, and I've seen countless over the years of my career. I see them when I'm hiring artists and I see them when I do these workshops with a live portfolio review at the end. And also when I do full length portfolio strategy sessions, and I always see a few of the same mistakes that hurt how artists present themselves. So this is what I call the put your best foot forward challenge. Uh, it should only take you around 10 minutes to do, and I'm going to walk you through it. So you have no reason not to do it or, if you want, you can just watch and learn and take notes if you prefer. But I really encourage you to take action, participate. One of the most common weaknesses artists who come into our school have is they don't present themselves well. And first impressions are so important in this industry and you usually don't get more than one. Okay, so first, first up, you're gonna give your art station prof uh, profile a makeover. ArtStation is one of the most popular websites on the internet with about uh, 20 million monthly active visitors. It's an industry standard platform for all digital artists. So if you're not on it right now, you should be. So right now, go to your portfolio or your website or ArtStation. And we're gonna do this together right now. So I'll, I'll wait a second while you guys pull that up. All right, so I'm actually pretty excited to see your stuff, your guys stuff at the end. Okay, so pulling it up. Okay, so you guys should be on your page right now. Now, don't scroll down. I want you to stay on your page, on your ArtStation page. Stay right there at the top, above the fold. So in case you don't know what that term means, it's the, the top of any web page before you start scrolling down. Now, imagine yourself being a recruiter or an employer, and you, you have like a stack of portfolios on your desk for, to look at that day, and you don't have much time. Now. Here's my question for you. Looking at what you see on the screen right now, do you feel that you put your best foot forward and are representing your skills and artwork the best way you possibly can? Let me know in the chat, guys. Right now, without scrolling down on your portfolio website, do you feel that you're putting your best foot forward and doing your best to represent your skills and artwork? Not at all. The angel says not at all. Come on, guys. Be honest. Let, let me know. And ask yourself as well, does what you see here clearly communicate to that potential employer 
clearly communicate that to the potential employer in two to three seconds tops. So again, imagine I have two seconds to look at your portfolio. Are, is it effective? Are you doing your best job? Uh, Kaylee says definitely could be better. And Duncan says uh, it could be worse. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jacob says I need some work, but I think I'm going in the right direction. At least I hope I am. Okay. We'll take a look at that in the end and uh, let you know for sure. Okay, so above the fold is the most important real estate on your portfolio, and you're going to be judged quickly based on what they see here. So the hard rules for this are um, when you're creating posts on ArtStation, no videos uh, on the top of your post. So we recruiters, we, we usually don't have time to watch videos. Like, again, we have two seconds. Instead, as, put as much of your artwork above the fold so we can see a, a large body of your work with a small with small and very well design, designed uh, thumbnails. Um, keep videos to the bottom of the page after you've already pressed this with the screenshots. Then we're more likely to watch your video. So this is a mistake I see people making all the time. You click into a portfolio piece and right away there's a video right there. And what usually happens is I'll close the page. I won't even watch it. So good tip to know. Number two, quality over quantity Quality over quantity is essential. So don't show any amateur work here. You're going to be judged on your weakest piece, and it's not going to help you impress potential employers or recruiters. So it's very important to get your work reviewed by a professional so you know that you're meeting the standard of what they're looking for. Um, avoid using things like free websites for your portfolio. It communicates that you're not willing to invest in yourself, and you're also not serious about this as a career. And nobody wants to work with artists who aren't serious. So if you're hard up for cash and have to use a free option, ArtStation is always the best choice. So it looks great and it's uh, widely accepted as the industry standard for portfolios. And when you are able to invest a few bucks, you can upgrade to their paid version and be able to customize the design. Uh, number four, use simple colors and design elements. So uh, this is why ArtStation is so successful because it's, it's very dark. And no matter where you build your portfolio, use neutral colors that don't pull the attention away from your artwork. Dark themes, like I said, are usually best as they make your colorful art pop. Things like fancy logos, over-designed stuff, or anything that competes with your artwork is not a good idea. So number five, tidy up your art station right now. This is an action item that you can do on this training. So I'm literally going to pause and we're going to continue we're not gonna continue so you can do this right now. So please take a second, log into your art station. If you don't have one, your action item is to create an art station account right now. And if you do have one and have some artwork up there already, I want you to rearrange your artwork from strongest first on the left-hand side to weakest on the right-hand side. So your worst art and anything that is not finished should even be taken down if it doesn't serve your overall portfolio quality. So unfinished stuff on your portfolio, guys, actually communicates that you have trouble finishing things. So that's the message that you're sending out. So be, be aware of these subconscious messages that you're sending. Um, and if you're just starting out, you now know all the common mistakes you're likely to make as you try to build your professional presence online. Um, and if you're already an intermediate or advanced artist, you've now just improved your current portfolio and professional presence in just a few minutes. So hope you guys did that. Hope you guys rearranged your artwork. And the reason we uh, put our best work on the left-hand side is because we actually look at portfolios like we read a book. So you always want to start off with the strongest piece on your left-hand side and the weakest on the right. Um, so if you stay until the very, very end, I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a guide that's going to really help you improve your art station and LinkedIn profiles even more. So, okay. All right. So that was fun. You guys had fun with that. Uh, yeah. Keep strong pieces on the bottom, but on the left-hand side. That's correct. Um, all right. All right. So that was fun guys. You had fun with that. Let's move on to the next thing. So the next action item we're going to do is we're going to improve our LinkedIn profile. So I want you guys to log, how many, first of all, how many of you guys have LinkedIn profiles? Who has LinkedIn profiles? Yeah, okay, you guys, who has LinkedIn profiles here? Okay, great. Seems like everyone has a LinkedIn profile, awesome. So the next action item, we're gonna improve your LinkedIn 
really quickly. So log into your LinkedIn profile right now. I'm gonna give you a second to, to go and do this. I'm gonna do this too on my, my profile. So log into your LinkedIn. And I want you to, maybe all of you guys haven't been haven't doing been doing this, but I want you to go into your profile and click edit. And I want you to edit your headline. And I want you to remove the words aspiring or novice or looking for work or anything like that from your from your header. So and I want you to replace that with 3D artist specializing in and you fill in the blank. So 3D artist specializing in 3D modeling, 3D artist specializing in texturing, 3D artist specializing in environments, whatever your, 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 your strength is or your passion is in 3D art. So get rid of anything that says aspiring, novice, looking for work and write 3D artist specializing in you fill in the blank. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you quickly some screenshots of bad and good bios so you can see the difference. Um, as you can see here, this is what you should not do. So sorry to use you, Kate, as an example for what not to do, but I gotta be honest with the people here today, right? So hopefully Kate has updated this and is uh, doing well in his career path. But um, this is an example of what you don't wanna do, aspiring video game environment artist. So he's gonna be aspiring for a long time and I'll explain why in a minute. And this is uh, a profile of a really good one, one of the best I've seen. His whole profile is really great, but his above the fold section right here is really spot on. So picking a specialization will help you be known for something and shows that you're confident that you can do it. And you can always change it later, but ideally you wanna pick something you know you wanna specialize in. So his 3D environment artist for video games specializing in hard surface model and texture creation. You can also see that he has a banner up. So a lot of amateurs, uh, some of the mistakes they make is they don't use a banner of their best artwork, use the real estate. Also the profile picture is important. I've seen artists with uh, no profile picture and imagine what that communicates to recruiters. It shows that you're not confident, that you're hiding, you're hiding something and it makes it hard for us to trust you. So you take Oscar as a, as a good example. So the next thing you should be doing on LinkedIn regularly is growing your network of connections in the games industry. So to start, I want you guys, okay, we're going to do, this is going to be a really fun one. So I want you guys to go to the company page of the studio you would love to work at. So what you can do is in the search at the top, you can type in the studio. So for me, as an example, I'm going to type in Ubisoft. I'm going to type in Ubisoft Toronto. And you can pick whatever studio you want to work at. All right, so once you um, find it, and also, sorry, for those of you who don't have a LinkedIn profile, while everyone is doing this exercise, your job is to quickly make a LinkedIn profile and activate it. Um, so now that you have your dream employer page open, click to the section that um, where it shows the current people, so down to people, the current employees at the company. And you, you'll see like a whole list of employees and positions. Now scroll through the people and find uh, those people who are doing the job you want to do. And then right click to open their profiles in another tab. Now, this is going to take some courage. I want you to click connect to make a connection. And you should see open a box to write a short personal message to the person. And so I want you guys to not only connect with these people, but write a little personal message. And I want you guys to do this right now. So um, all you need to say is something like this. So if, you, if you're not sure what to say, say something like this. So, uh, hey, name, my name is, and I see that you are a 3D artist at company. I'm still working to master my skills and hope to work at company, your company one day, hopefully soon. I'm looking to make connections here on LinkedIn with other 3D artists who are already working there. I look forward to connecting with you best, your name. So if you don't know what's right, write something like that. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes just to, uh, to write that out. And once you're done that, let me know in the chat if you actually 
mustered up the courage to, to do that. Uh, if it's another, stick with English. Yeah, don't try to like translate something. All right. So, so this is a practice and courage, guys. So really, it doesn't even have to be this long. It could be just something short, but make get into the habit of sending, making connection requests with a message attached. All right, now gather some courage, practice a little inner game and send it off. And that's it. And once you're done, let me know in the comments if you actually took part in this exercise. And uh, as people accept your connection requests, you can quickly message them and, and thank them for accepting and leave it at that. So as you guys finish, let me know. And I'm just gonna continue while you guys write that so you can just like listen to what I'm saying. All right, then you after you've done that, you can creep their profile and see if they write any posts or if they publish any content and you know, make sure to, to follow that person so you always get notifications when they post something. Yeah, let me know in the comments, guys, as you do that. All right, so Jacob says he just did it. That's great, congratulations. So how does that feel? How does it feel to actually do it? So Angel says he's done that. All right, good. So I need to connect, Jacob says good, it felt good, but I need to start connecting with more people. Uh, and Angel says it's weird to be so precise. and. Ehab says done. So good job, guys. Good job for exercising some uh, inner game and building some courage. Now get used to doing that on a daily basis. So um, so make also make sure to follow that person so you like, share, and comment on their posts, with, which everybody always appreciate. Uh, I post on LinkedIn all the time, and the people who I follow are uh, who I come to know and admire. Um, nobody likes posting things on LinkedIn and getting zero engagement. So when you engage in a helpful way, it's almost always appreciated. Okay. And so for the last LinkedIn profile boosting challenge, I'm going to teach you how to get your recommendations and skills and endorsements growing regularly. Because um, the first thing that potential recruiters or employers are going to check are going to do is they're going to check out your LinkedIn profile and look at your title and your bio. The next thing they're going to look at is your uh, current employment status, your skills and experiment, experience endorsements, and your recommendations. So you can see um, you can see here this area of the profile page for skills and endorsements. And, and you can reorder this section and make sure your top skills are number one, two, and three. This way people know um, what you want and to be endorsed for. So. I highly encourage you to take some time, at least 20 to 30 minutes a day, and go through your LinkedIn contacts and endorse other 3D artists you know for their skills in 3D art. Also, if you know them well, you can write a few words for a detailed recommendation and do that regularly. So you can see here, uh, this is my own recommendation section. Uh, notice how I've given more than I've received. And uh, so the key, that's the key to getting them is be sincere and generous and giving them to others and others will re reciprocate. So you guys should be doing this like at least like a couple times a week is, um, you know, maybe grab a cup of coffee in the morning, sit down to your computer, go on to LinkedIn and recommend something, someone out of the blue. And you'll find that maybe that person won't respond right away, 
but uh, somebody will. And this is how you start building up your recommendations. So that wraps up this exercise. I hope that helped. Um, the more skills and endorsements, uh, the more skills and endorsements and recommendations you get, the more impressive your LinkedIn profile will be. And if you want to participate in any of our future monthly LinkedIn profile boosting reciprocation parties, make sure that you guys always open our email so you don't miss the invites. All right. So that's it for LinkedIn. You definitely have enough stuff to do to keep you busy for a while. And if you do what I just showed you and do it over and over again, you'll have a lot of confidence in presenting yourself. And with practice over time, you'll become confident connecting with others on LinkedIn. So uh, these were just a few things that you could do right now to improve your starting point. So how would you like us to personally help you get started on the right foot and heading in the right direction in every possible way? Let me know in the chat if you, uh, how we could help you. How could we help you guys? Like, let me know. So after we assess your starting point and take inventory of your strengths and weaknesses, you now need to build the skills and make great 3D art. Now, now it's time to get you rolling in the right direction with your study. So the next step is gaining the right knowledge and putting it into, in, into practice and develop and own your provable 3D art skills. So if you're just starting, you need to learn the fundamentals and start from square one, developing your skills, gaining confidence, and then advancing. And if you see yourself at the intermediate or advanced stage, you still might need to relearn these fundamentals for a better foundation and then work your way back up to the advanced level. You can't build a building on weak foundations and digital art is no different. So you need to go from a beginner level, do the training and homework, and then do intermediate training and assignments. And only after you beat the bosses at these levels, should you try the more advanced levels that will help you create art that gets you hired. In your intake, we'll figure out your skill level and your best starting point in the courses. If you're a total rookie or new to 3ds max you'll get started on a square one in the beginner track in intro to 3d modeling you'll learn first learn the fundamentals of 3d modeling and important industry workflows you will also learn how to use hotkeys and save time to increase your productivity uh, you'll learn how to make game ready props that will end up with some seriously impressive pieces in your portfolio and if you are intermediate or already a graduate you could go straight to the advanced level courses. From here, you will learn more advanced skills step-by-step step until you are ready for creating your advanced 3D environment. As someone who has hired artists for years, I'll let you in on a little secret nobody told you. You will get hired 100% of the time based on your artwork and provable skills, not on your college degree. So nobody really cares where you went to school and uh, they usually don't even care if you went to school at all. They just want to know that you can do the work and uh, that you and the only way they know you can do this is through your artwork in your portfolio. When you learn the provable workflows and work hard, never giving up, you'll learn a valuable skill set that shows in your artwork. And uh, once you have these skills mastered, you'll be able to apply these techniques to future projects and complete them in half the time. So it's just like riding a bike in a lot of ways. So it's going to be difficult and slow at first, but once you get some experience, it eventually becomes second nature and it's, it's a ton, it's a ton of fun. So in, in and around one and a half years, we've had around 50 students total and we help six students get work in AAA studios and on indie games uh, too. And they all did this by following the training lessons in the courses step-by-step. Step. We've also helped another 16 students complete AAA level 3D environments, some students completing two pieces and even more who are working hard to complete one soon. We've helped amateurs going from knowing little to knowing to nothing to being exceptional. Um, we've helped mediocre artists who thought they were talented master their base skills and actually become super talented and confident 3D games artists. And we've helped students, uh, we've helped our students not only upgrade their technical and artistic skills, but also become leveled up versions of themselves. They have more integrity and are more responsible. They're also more self-aware of their bad habits and shortcomings that cause their self-sabotage and have better tools for overcoming their internal stumbling blocks. 
I'll illustrate this point through another short story of one of our Game Arts Academy graduates, Ian Polito. So Ian was one of my first students when I was first launching the school two years ago. And here is uh, a shot of Ian's work before joining our Advanced Environment Mastery course. So as you can see, it's not a bad piece. And again, let me know in the comments, guys, like, what do you think of it? What do you, where do you think it could be improved? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? I think it's a pretty good piece overall. I definitely don't think that it's, um, that it's professional level. It's definitely, you might look at it and say, well, like, well, that's pretty good. But I can tell you from my experience that it's not good enough to get a job at a AAA studio. So Angel says it feels washed up. Like it feels a little bit washed out, I would agree. Also very dark. It's hard to see things. Uh, the textures could be a lot more detailed. There could be a lot more storytelling elements. Jacob says it looks too dark. I would agree. So let's take a look at another piece of his. So this is his uh, desert war zone environment. And um, so what do you guys think? Why was he failing to get work with this piece? So... Um, this one looks very washed out as well. Kaylee says the in the previous one, the, too much contrast and the particles draw attention away. Yeah, I would agree. But this piece, not so bad at all. I think he's like definitely improving. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Wh wh where could he improve in this piece here? So better camera angles. Ehab says it's it's very blurry. Yeah, okay, yeah. I think he's using too much blur in the background there as well. And all right. And so compare this to and to uh, some of the stuff that he created in our school. So this is uh, his first environment he calls his Japanese bedroom environment. So how is this better than his past art? Like, can you see any improvements in... In this piece compared to his old piece, here's another three quarter. Now it has more of a story. Yeah, exactly. This is a big improvement over his uh, college level work. And here's like a full shot of the environment. It's a little diorama that he did. And here's like uh, a close up of the laptop on the bed. And I actually feel that like it, I feel like I could be in this environment, like the, the reflections off the keys on the laptop. Uh, the blanket feels like actually like a blanket. It's very realistic. It's on point. Yeah, I think it did a really good job with that. So he started with this one environment and then created another one right after it to push his skills even further and make his portfolio way more impressive. So this is his second environment called it's uh, the rail car based on Metro 2033, I think it's called. So what do you guys think of his, looking at his first piece of artwork that he did in college compared to now? What do you think of this piece? I love it. Angel says, I love it. Ehab says, more realistic. The sofa in the back is amazing. Wow, that is game art. Looks very professional. Yeah, I would agree. So take a look at like the details that he put in his textures and all the storytelling elements that he has in his textures and all the props, everything tells a very cohesive story. Uh, Kaylee says the couch is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think he really, really pushed his skills with, uh, this is the same person as the bedroom. Yeah, same, all the environments I just showed you, this is the same person. So you can see his journey from like not giving up when he was finished college to completing uh, a AAA level environment. So here's what he had to say about his time with us. He says, I found the weekly team meetings every Friday to be very valuable. They provided me an opportunity for critique, knowledge sharing, getting feedback from the instructor and fellow students, and also find potential solutions to any questions or problems I came across. I would encourage someone to join, especially if they are a new graduate or a disgruntled 3D artist with some experience who aspires to work in the games industry, but can't land a position at a game studio. Um, I'm also happy and to say 
I'm also happy to say that um, thanks to his, these two environments that you guys just saw and his persistence, Ian was able to land a job at his dream studio, uh, Ubisoft Toronto. But um, the key to make this work for yourself brings us to step three, which we call the top secret missing ingredient for success as a game artist, the inner game. This final part is the most important part of becoming a 3D artist who has a meaningful and successful career in games. And it's also the most overlooked and never taught in colleges. You can start strong on this path and develop all the skills, but if you run and hide from the emotional exposure and internal obstacles you need to overcome, you will never take the action you need to take. And you will never beat the boss between you and the next level on your journey. Now, there are many components of having inner game in life, but here we focus on the four most important areas that I see so many 3D artists struggling with. Um, first, you need to assess and improve your self-discipline and daily habits. So the sad truth is that many artists trying to go pro were raised in the digital art daycare of their parents' cushy basement. Uh, I know I was. Who, who here can relate to that? Who here you know, grew up in your mom's basement and um, that's where your digital daycare was? Our uh, digital art dojo is specifically designed to help you build discipline and practice it consistently. Uh, discipline is like a mental muscle. And when you work it out, it strengthens over time. Without self-discipline, success is impossible. Next, you need to create actionable steps to improve your courage, resilience, and anti-fragility. You just proved you could, you could start to be courageous in the LinkedIn challenge. Uh, it felt pretty good, didn't it, to, be, to practice some courage? Courage is, is like that because it feels uncomfortable before and while you are doing something. But um, and it, it can be very scary well, before you do it, do it and as you're doing it. But afterwards, it feels so great. How many of you guys feel great after doing that LinkedIn challenge? Um, you're definitely going to go through some tough passages and tight squeezes on your journey. And if you avoid action when it gets scary or uncomfortable, you'll give up and never try again. The next component of inner game we call having a value first mindset. And you will start to implement this by being of service to others instead of trying to get what you need from them first. On average, us humans are usually self-oriented and self-serving, but this hurts our ability to build strong connections with high quality people we can count on in life. So during your time with Game Arts Academy, you will learn how to be of value to others and develop this skill set so you can be of the most value to your future employers or partners. And then the final part of this process is the natural conclusion of these previous three steps being practiced consistently, which is increased self-confidence. And as I said before, this will help you land work in this field more than you can imagine. You can't fake authentic confidence and it will naturally exude from you as you embody these other virtues. Sorry guys, just give me one sec. So when this last step is done right, you will experience a total transformation and it will upgrade you in ways you never imagined possible in a short amount of time. As you work your way through the modules, share your work and get feedback, your belief in yourself as an artist will naturally grow. And when you finally produce AAA level environment art that turns heads and gets you noticed, you'll feel way more confident. Everything you'll do up to this point in the program is intentionally designed to get you to this specific point where you finally feel a sense of confidence in yourself and your ability to create world-class 3D art on demand. And once, your work, once you work your way through the inner game, you will not be the same artist or the same person. You'll be a leveled up version of yourself and it will show not just in your work, but in your attitude as well. And you will have more confidence in yourself and your ability to put yourself out there than you ever have before. So to wrap things up, I'm going to share one more short case study that proves this point. I'd like to introduce you to uh, now to Dario Caval Cavallari. So Dario went to a college in Toronto and also graduated from a 3D 3D arts and animation program. I met him at a grad show where he was showcasing his work. 
So I was there checking out all the students' booths and I was going around giving feedback and advice on people's work. Um, Dario and I stayed in touch and he ended up joining our courses and coaching program in the fall of 2019. So Dario's art and skills were still around the beginner level when he started, even though he was a college grad. He had some basic modeling skills, basic lighting skills, and still had some way to get go to get to the intermediate and advanced level. When he came in, he didn't trust that he could make good artistic decisions as an artist and struggled with self-confidence and being decisive. How many of you guys can relate to that? Um, you struggle with making good artistic choices and you doubt your artistic choices. I think that's something that we all share as artists. Yeah, Angel says, that's my main issue. Jacob says, I do. I do as well. I think that's the biggest challenge for artists. Now, here's a shot of some of his art he made in college and um, before he joined Game Arts Academy. So this is a bedroom environment that he made in college before joining us. Like you can see it's pretty basic, nothing spectacular. Again, let me know in the comments, like, what do you guys think? Like what's, what's working, what's not working? What could you have done better? Use this as an opportunity to like strengthen your critical eye. Angel says the art direction is missing. You know, there's no clear plan for his art. Uh, Kaylee says there's too much going on. Not enough clarity. Ehab says uh, lighting needs a big improvement. Yeah, so I would agree with that. Feels very flat. Um, some of the things look a little bit out of scale. Curtains look odd. Definitely lighting could be improved. I think some of the comments we got in other productions, are, uh, sorry, presentations were the Fresh Prince thing on the TV is a little distracting. All right. So you can see it's pretty basic, nothing spectacular. Uh, Andrew says overexposure on objects, objects that aren't focal. Yeah, definitely. And this is a guitar prop he made. And you can see it's not bad, not world class at all. You can see it's just a guitar. His presentation could be better too. So again, this is a big pet peeve of mine. People doing marmoset renders on blurry backgrounds and like using their HDR in the background. I recommend that you guys like, if you're, if you're going to show off props, that you build some sort of mini environment around them, like uh, put them on a surface or something like that. Kaylee says it's it's decent, but not exceptional. Yeah, exactly. So not exceptional means that he's not going to get any callbacks for uh, jobs. Uh, this is another one. This is an outdoor environment that he made. So what is missing that clearly stops him from succeeding? Like, why would a recruiter pass this piece up? Why wouldn't uh, put yourself in the shoes of a, re a recruiter? Angel says, out of scale and no focal point. The choice of shot could be better. Yeah, it's unfocused, like he was saying, no focal point. Kind of dark, hard to see things. Fog needs to be reduced. Yeah, Ehab says fog needs to be reduced. All right. So as soon as he enrolled, we got him onboarded and assessed his strengths and weaknesses. So we looked at all those pieces. We assessed all those weaknesses like you guys are doing right now. We reviewed his art and came up with a custom plan for him and helped him determine what the best flagship portfolio piece would be for him to create. We also worked together to make a custom course path for him to, com to complete, to get him to his end goal as fast and effectively as possible. So he started with some solid beginner skills. So uh, a few of our other courses were enough to get him to the intermediate level, but it was the coaching and community support that really helped him make the best of his time and effort. Getting access every week to professional and peer feedback helped him to stop spinning his wheels. Being held accountable in a tribe of supportive peers, uh, sharing a common goal helped him big time. And uh, getting industry expert feedback on his work and uh, how we could improve it helped him accelerate his results. The support structures helped him get his 3 environment finished way faster than he would have on his own. I've seen um, many students start environments and never complete them. Also, when he inevitably faced the demons of self-doubt and discouragement, like all artists do, we helped him face them and come out on top. With a bit of consistent guidance, he started to have more confidence in himself, and he started to make good decisions as an artist on his own. Now, you guys uh, like the work that they did on uh, Last of Us 2? 
the environments, I thought they were pretty spectacular. I think like they were probably the best environments I've ever seen in a video game. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. The, the environments were just top notch, 10 out of 10. So now compare what you guys saw and um, his previous pieces to now his new piece, the new abandoned arcade, he calls Coin Runner's Arcade based on The Last of Us 2. Now, do you think he overcame his demons and made good artistic decisions this time? What do you guys think? Do you think he improved his artistic decisions and his skill set? Angel says, totally improved. I would agree. How much time? It took him around, I'd say, five months, five or six months to do this. Yeah, this is an improvement. I saw this trending on ArtStation. Yeah. Not uncommon for our... Um, students artwork to be trending on art station so yeah what do you guys think of it now like any feedback or comments or how how has he improved over his other stuff there's another shot of the, the foliage i think his foliage skills really improved ehab says way improved yeah he it's like a like night and day So this piece even caught the attention of the artist at Naughty Dog when, when he got it trending on ArtStation. So like, I, like it was mentioned in the comments, when our students complete their environments and post them on ArtStation, they're usually trending within hours. But this was especially cool, and you can see how stoked Dario was for this recognition. So uh, here's what he had to say about working on this project with us here at Game Arts Academy. Um, Game Arts Academy has taught me tons of new skills, and more importantly, how to become a better artist. The community is very reactive to your problems and delivers steady feedback on your work. Being a part of the team is the best decision I made out of college. As often I say to my students, you don't create the environment art, the environment art creates you, or at least it helps you recreate yourself. So accomplishing what these students did requires you to push yourself and grow beyond your current capacities and stretch yourself in more ways than just artistically. All these steps I just showed you are pretty simple and straightforward, but not easy to do. The tricky part of all this, doing all this is uh, fourfold. The first challenge is staying organized and knowing exactly what to do in the right order to maximize your time and efforts. Time and energy management is one of the biggest challenges I see 3D artists struggling with. They generally start off very excited to start a new project but waste their time not knowing if what they're doing is right, self-doubting and scrapping projects and never working on them again. This always causes the next issue, which compounds on the first. Not knowing to do leaves you with amateur art that you have no idea how to turn into pro-level art. As you saw in all the case studies I just showed you, there is a huge difference between the amateur and college-level art or stuff made by watching YouTube videos and AAA level quality art. Then comes the next sticking point of working on your own and doing all yourself, which is procrastination and self-sabotage. Nothing is more discouraged than, discouraging than stumbling over yourself in the, fir in the first years and producing art that brings out your worst self-criticism demons and leaves you in a slump. As an artist myself, I know how self-critical we can be, especially in the beginning stages. And when that voice inside starts yelling, this sucks. You suck. It's so easy to avoid the heavy hitting, heavy lifting and escape into gaming for hours or days on end and letting all your artwork remain half-baked and unfinished. Follow through and being held accountable is what many aspiring artists uh, lack. And the end result of consistently tripping over these common stumbling blocks is your inner game growth being totally stunted. And I've already said enough about why this is an issue. Any one of these four things is, is tough to tackle on your own, and mastering all four is even tougher. And most give up way before they reach the finish line and achieve their career goals. But if you really want it, if you really want it, and are willing and able to be coachable and do the work, it's doable. That's why I would like to invite you to work with us. Um, this is me, and this is uh, three of our industry veteran game art coaches: Eric, uh, James, and Dylan. Um, Dylan's the one that did that typewriter course that you guys are doing. 
Um, so there will be more of us in the future as we continue to expand the school. But um, we run an online school support community and private coaching program where we walk you through everything we've gone over in this workshop. We offer different program tiers and support you at the exact level you need and are ready to commit to. These are just a few of my current and past students ranging from beginner to advanced artists. We now are around 50 students and more joining are joining each week. And today I'd like to invite you to join Game Arts Academy based training program and student community if you want to save money and not do all of this on your own. So you will get access to uh, 14 training courses and more that are coming, an active online community and a few other student support services that will help you get results way easier and faster than you would trying to do this by yourself. These three features will help you uh, be held accountable to your commitments and complete the coursework and project deliverables. Uh, my mission is to make it as easy as possible for you to succeed and create AAA level flagship environment pieces if you do the work. To put this into perspective, um, just the first six courses of the beginner's level are the equivalent of the first two years of a high-end college program that would easily cost $10,000 to $15,000. These 14 courses available now are like a three year, three to four year college program that would cost you well over $25,000. And today you can grab them for less than a, a daily cup of coffee. And I know this because I, I grab a coffee literally every day. So um, the Triforce of Success in this industry boils down to three main parts. You got to understand the industry and how it operates and what it wants from you as an artist. You got to know your topics of study and all the fundamental skills relevant to all your all expert 3D artists. And you got to know yourself first and foremost, your strengths, your weaknesses, your personality and temperament and can constantly work to refine yourself and define your path in this field. Uh, to help you crush it in all these areas, we will help you build industry domain expertise, skill set expertise, and inner game expertise with these courses and student support services. So here's what uh, what's included in this deal that will help you improve in these areas. Uh, I'll go through, through them all in more detail in a minute, but you get 14 plus courses available now and all that we add in the future. An onboarding and orientation call, an online peer support community, a daily check-in call, a silent study room, a project management tool designed specifically for digital art workflows, and access to our coaching call recordings library. So as I just mentioned, you'll get access to 14 beginner, intermediate, and advanced courses right away. In the beginner series, this includes uh, things like uh, basic 3D modeling, editing polygons, a subdivision modeling course, intro to texturing, and lighting and rendering. Um, at the intermediate level that you get access to right away, we have some interesting courses like how to build game-ready trees, game-ready rocks, how to create World of Warcraft type textures using ZBrush, a new course that we just got that we're really excited about, Fusion 360 for games that teaches a whole new hard surface workflow in Fusion 360 that's way faster than what you've been doing up until now, and a substance mastery course that's currently in the works. At the advanced level, you get uh, our flagship course, which is the advanced environment mastery course. So all those amazing environments that you just saw, all the, the students that went through this course to get those results. We have a LinkedIn building, networking building course so you can learn way more little trade secrets uh, besides the stuff that I just shared with you on this uh, training. Uh, a skills tune-up course. So this is a great course. If you're intermediate, you just want to jump in there and polish up your skills to get ready for the advanced mastery course. And then we have a really exciting course that's coming up called How to Create Your Own Indie Game. You know, this course is going to be, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this uh, a little bit later, but they're really exciting. And... Um, so we're also in the talks with a bunch of other veteran digital artists to create other specialty courses. I'm planning to have at least 20 courses by the end of the year. We're also uh, we also have a group onboarding call together, so you can get to know we can get to know you and your goals better, and we'll get you on the best course path to help you accomplish those goals. Um, you're also going to get access to our peer community, 
Um, so this is like the, one of the most valuable aspects of the school is the community. So everybody's like really friendly with each other. We always help each other out. We practice giving first before getting. So that way the, the, the Slack community is very active. So when you have a problem, you usually get a response very quickly. And um, the, it's a really lively community with a bunch of really great people. It's one of the best aspects of Game Arts Academy. Um, also got a, a bunch of really cool stuff. So this is the silent study room. And um, we think one of the toughest challenges with artists that artists have is staying focused and doing the work. So um, resistance and procrastination is very common, especially with the endless distractions of the internet. So this tool will help you feel like you're in a classroom with your fellow students so you can get in work mode uh, from your desk at home. We also use a productivity technique called the Pomodoro, where we batch work sprints in 25 minute intervals. So you can see there's a timer in the middle of the room and we're all kind of following this timer and taking five minute breaks every 25 minutes. So it's really effective. And here is a screenshot of our G Scrum project management tool for 3D artists. So I've made a workflow for 3D artists. Um, so I've made a workflow for 3D game artists to follow so you can maximize your productivity. So messy processes and workflows can kill your chances of making it in the industry. And many studios use this type of like scrum workflow tool. So this is how we help you get used to the tools that you'll likely be used once you get employed. Um, and, uh, sorry, one sec guys. And we have three coaching programs you can apply for if you're interested now in the future. And, uh, they're all, uh, available for a year long commitment at the pro level, you'll get access to a bi-weekly small group coaching call and monthly Q and a session where you can submit questions in advance. The pro plus level is the exact same, but you get access to weekly group coaching calls instead of bi-weekly calls. And in our elite coaching program, you'll get bi-weekly group coaching and bi-weekly coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching on alternate, alter, alternate weeks. And um, it really just depends on how much direct support and feedback you want from an industry veteran coach. But if you're interested in any of these, we can have a call and talk more. They're uh, by application only, so you gotta join the base tier before applying. Um, let's move on to the Q&A session portfolio review for those who are brave enough to share their work. And uh, we're going to have a hard cutoff time at, what, 4 o'clock and uh, no, go, no longer than that. So if you want your portfolio review, make sure that you're going to, that you post your, your stuff up there. So also, if you have any questions about the industry or um, anything like that, that you you thought of during the presentation, now's the time to ask as well. So let's go ahead and open up the portfolio review. So if you wanna have your portfolio review, just post your ArtStation link in the comments there. All right, so we got Angel first. So we're gonna start with Angel. So just give me a sec to share my screen here. All right. So here we have Angel's um, portfolio. And above the fold, I think you did a really good job. I like that you used a picture of yourself. And I like that um, you have a really cool uh, 3D art piece back there. It's very well textured. And the composition looks really nice. So as a recruiter, right away, it makes me want to explore more. So that's really great. Um, I like how you wrote environment artist that's Houdini certified. Houdini is becoming quickly like a very powerful tool in the game art industry. So really great that you did that. So just looking at your body of work, we're looking at your thumbnails first, right? And I think you did a pretty good job with the thumbnails. I think like some pieces like the, the, um, the lantern, you could maybe make it a little bit more close up. It seems a little bit too far for a thumbnail. And um, some of the other pieces I think also could be a little bit more close up to the to subject matter. So for example, the Tatooine scene might be better if you're a little bit close up to it. Use the logo as well, like use the Star Wars logo because that's really gonna get a lot of attention from people, right? And anywhere else that you have 
that you can use logos, use logos as well. Those are really a really great technique for um, ArtStation and um, really great little raccoon here. So overall, the thumbnails, I think, could be improved a little bit better. They could be a little bit more compelling and be adding a little bit more contrast to them as well. But overall, I can see you have very high quality assets. I think your portfolio overall needs more. It would benefit from having like a flagship portfolio piece, uh, like a piece like we saw with Ian and all those students that kind of lead off your portfolio with a very strong way. And some of these um, environments as well, I think you could uh, definitely add more to them. I think you have some great assets in here, but it'd be nice to see more assets, to see more storytelling assets. They feel a little bit bare to me, like they're something's missing. And um, I think you could definitely do a lot better with pushing them a lot further. That being said, I think they're great starts, but you could definitely uh, add more to them. Like the Tatooine scene, like there's definitely a lot more props and storytelling things that you could do to, uh, to push the scene even further. I really like the stuff that you did with Houdini. Um, in integrating that into your uh, UE4 workflow, I think is really cool. I would play that up a little bit more on your portfolio. And it looks like you have some great rocks here. Overall, I think like everything on your portfolio is really good, but you could just definitely push the environment stuff a little bit more. All right. Let's go with uh, Kay Kaylee next. And we will share. All right. So above the fold, I think the, the angle and the composition of the environment you have up there is really cool. I think as a um, a profile image, it's it works great. However, it's suffering from the problem of not being done. So right away, that's what you're communicating to recruiters is that you have problems finishing things. And I think like the lighting could be improved. And uh, and, and so I would say like take it all the way, like just finish it. And um, going down into your portfolio, uh, I see a couple other really great environments. Like the, the thumbnails are really well done. The composition of the th thumbnails is great, but they're not finished, right? So that is actually like hurting your portfolio. So you really need to take these environments and finish them all the way. I think they're, in terms of blockouts, they're great. These are really great solid starting points for building advanced environments. So I would like, um, I would say for you, a good strategy would, would not be to start something new, but actually take these and push them as far as you can. And then you already have this, the, the beginnings of two really great environments. And if you learn the advanced skills and advanced arc, arc viz lighting in these environments, you could really have some solid portfolio pieces that could land you work within like a year. So um, that's where I think that's at. Um, I think the texturing stuff that you did here is great. Uh, I would like to see maybe some more of that stuff. Um, material balls on and substance stuff is make always make really great portfolio pieces that you can bang out quickly and uh, character stuff. Um, I would say like it definitely needs work. I wouldn't, I'd probably like if you're gonna, if you're serious about your portfolio, I would probably take this off and focus on like environment building and um, having these two solid environments, some more material balls, and maybe a, a third flagship environment piece. Um, and Andrew, let's look at Andrew's portfolio. All right. So Andrew's portfolio. So I've actually seen you post a lot of this stuff on LinkedIn. So I think Andrew is, um, doing a really great job on his LinkedIn presence because I see his posts regularly on LinkedIn. I see he's always posting work and guys, what that does is it recruiters and stuff that maybe your LinkedIn contacts or second contacts, they're seeing you all the time, right? They're, they're seeing your name all the time. They're seeing your work all the time. And so it just, it helps warm them up when it comes time to look for a job. So what he's doing on LinkedIn is really great. I would advise the same for, for many of you guys, just constantly posting stuff on LinkedIn. Um, so above the fold without scrolling, I think your portfolio site is very like, I like the simplicity of it. I like how simple it is. I like how simple your fonts are. There's nothing like in your face. It's all about your work, which I think is great. I think you got some really great pieces that demonstrate really nice lighting. 
Um, I like how you have a, a very small scene that shows like a high level of detail in your artwork. Um, it seems like you're going for a specific style that looks like a, a cell shaded kind of um, look, which I think is very effective. I've never really seen anything like this before. And I think you did a really good job on it. So good piece there. Um, gr also great little environment as well. Like I like the fact that you do mini environments and mini scenes. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a huge environment. You could do like small scenes like this that tell an effective story and that show different lighting moods and stuff. So again, a uh, very solid piece, good job. And, um, Overall, like it looks like you have a very nice portfolio. Like everything here, the the the, the hand painted stuff is really great, um, and I would say like the tractor is really cool. I love the clay render. Uh, I would say like push it all the way, like finish it. You know, make it look like as realistic as possible, and put it in a little scene. But um, overall, I think you have a very unique art style that is great and. Um, you could definitely use, you could definitely learn some more about environment building and uh, next gen environment techniques and also like some advanced lighting, I think would be really good for you to do. Practicing some more lighting, learning like how to get under the hood of like Unreal Engine and things like that. But overall, really great portfolio. I follow your stuff on ArtStation all the time. And let's look at Jacob's portfolio next. All right, so Jacob, um, so this is your above the fold because we pretty much can't scroll anymore down the page. So it looks like you're you're really wanting to be a texture artist, which I think is great. I think the way that you're presenting it is also very good. Um, some really nice materials here. I would go even further with this, like show what this material looks like on an actual prop or like an environment. And uh, just to see how, how like we can use it and how it looks within the context, context of a lit environment. That's what's really important. And that's what, when, when we're looking to hire texture artists in game studios, we want to see how it, how it looks in the engine, right? Not just like a, a marmoset render, but how it looks like maybe in UE4 and how it reacts and things like that. So you can actually show your materials in like a little bit of a video from different angles so we can see how the specular and the roughness maps and all that react to light. Um, so same thing with this, like how would this look on an actual prop and things like that? Like these material balls are one thing, but actually showing it in context would be, I think a little bit better. Uh, same with things like dirt ground. You have a close up of a dirt, uh, of a ground, but how does it tile? Like what, how, do, how, would, how would this look over a large area? Would we see a lot of repeating shapes? That's what um, we want to see as uh, as recruiters. Um, but overall, like the material stuff the, and the material study that you're doing is really great. I think you have a really good solid foundation. It's just a matter of like demonstrating these in uh, context, uh, getting more shots. So most of these you only have like one shot, but like seeing this like in an actual environment, I think would be better. So. And also for your uh, cover image, it'd be nice to have like a, a picture of yourself smiling. Having a smiling picture always um, helps people feel more comfortable, especially like if someone's looking to hire you, makes you feel approachable. And having like a, a nice backdrop of one of your materials would be nice as well. All right, Ethan. Right. So I actually taught Ethan in college and um, he was doing some really great work then. So you were doing some gr really great work then, Ethan. I think uh, when you graduated college, you um, you did a good job of uh, building your foundational skills upon graduating. And now it's a matter of building on those foundational skills now that you've graduated. And so I see that you've been busy since you've graduated. Um, one of the things I, I think like you do a really good job with your thumbnails 
and the above the fold image that you have here is really great. It feels like compelling that we're a part of the scene. Um, I like the composition as well. So I think you did a good job there. Your thumbnails generally are very good. Like uh, this is a great thumbnail composition wise. Um, doing things like sh only showing part of the model is a good strategy for thumbnails. Uh, so you've done that here. Uh, the tank, we'll talk about the tank in a little bit. So it looks like you're focused mainly as an environment artist and a prop artist. So I think the main issue with your environments that um, if we click through them is lack of detail. So we can see that with like the skulls, right? But they look very, pretty basic. It looks like um, they're lacking a lot of detail. Um, it appears to me that you don't fully grasp and understand uh, industry, current industry standard workflows for environments. So I can tell um, this by the way that you're using tileable textures on your assets and uh, some of your lighting also looks low quality. So I think that that's really where you need to put a lot of your effort is like being patient and spending a lot more time observing your reference and implementing a lot more detail into your environments as well as learning advanced lighting skills. Um, so even like another example, like the German trench here, right? I saw this a couple of years ago too. Uh, just lo looks like it lacks detail. I like the composition of your of your shots. I think you do a really good job with that kind of stuff. But things like your roughness values are um, very consistent. There's They don't really tell a story. Everything feels like the same level of shininess. So there's a lot of work that you need to do with understanding like how PBR materials react with lighting and things like that. Um, I think the tank model is a really good model, but uh, things like the bumps are too strong and that's what's really detracting it from making it look real as well as you, it's, it's floating in space. So it's better to have it as part of a seed. So overall, I think that the work that you need to do, like I mentioned, is lighting, um, material work and putting a lot more effort and patience and time into um, details in your environments. Uh, you have a good solid foundational base that you got from college. Now you need to really build on that and take it to a pro level if you're serious about a career in this field. Uh, Duncan. Duncan, also another student that I taught in college. So I think same thing as Ethan, like it looks like you, in your college experience, you, you learned all your base skills, right? I can see that your work is overall at a college level, right? And so um, now it's a matter of like really learning what those uh, pro level techniques are and how to, to leverage those things. And also um, you, you got some interesting pieces here, but uh, I think what you need to do is kind of go back and learn some of the base fundamentals to build back up on. And so that you build yourself back to an intermediate level, then back to an advanced level, right? So um, reassessing some of the base foundational skills like proper unwrapping, um, and proper baking skills and more advanced baking skills as well, which is something that we teach in the, in the school, um, to get your props to a, another higher level of, uh, of quality. I think your portfolio could benefit from an advanced environment as well and some more advanced prop work where you take a little bit more time and effort and patience in building those assets out. So that's where I think you are. I think overall in your portfolio, it demonstrates a college level um, understanding and you really need to like get it to the next level if you're serious about building a career. Um, let's go with Ehab. Sorry, one sec here. Okay, so not very much going on. I think that's where um, you need to do a lot more work is just building more of a portfolio. So far, you only have one piece. Um, although it looks like a very cool piece, I'm not exactly sure what you did on it, which I think is the problem. It looks like you um, were building some sort of car configurer using Unreal Engine, but it's like you don't really specify what you did on it. It's like, did you create the UI? Did you, like, what did you do exactly, right? And so... Um, the cars look cool as well as like, did you model this car? Um, if you did so, then maybe another post showing the cars that you modeled 
specifically would be good. So I think like the tool is really cool looking. And again, it's like, did you make this tool? Like, what did you do exactly? So I think in your portfolio, you need to kind of demonstrate, communicate what you worked on and what you did, um, which I think would make it more effective as well. I think you just need a lot more stuff on here. So if you're a car modeler, then show all your car models. And if you're building tools, then then specify what you did in the description of those tools as well. Also, be nice to have like a, a bit of a cover image here of like a cool car or something that you that you created as well. All right. Kaylee says, I think that's we got through most of them. Kaylee says, mine is a bit iffy right now. Haven't had the chance to texture the two environments. Okay, yeah. So just kind of commenting on some of the things we did planning and Kaylee says I'm planning to specialize in lighting later I would say like specialize in lighting now if you're even like at the stage you're at in those environments it's good to learn advanced lighting early so in our advanced env environment mastery course we actually do it different than they do it in college in college you'll you'll probably like not really touch on lighting at all or if they do it's like re very late in the course right and so at that point, you've already built your environment. But what we do is different. We focus on lighting in like the second module, second or third module of, of advanced environment mastery. And the reason we do that is because we want to get your lighting skills up to par early so that you can light even your blockouts at an advanced level. And then it just gives you a lot of motivation. So you're always working on lighting throughout the entire process. To give you an example, one of our students... Uh, he created he, his lighting was amazing like Sarim for example he did like probably over 50 to 75 lighting passes on that environment before he got it to that quality right so it's it's something I think you shouldn't focus on later you should focus on early the the earlier the better um, you have says I'll have some unfinished work but I'm still working on them now so William just posted his let's take a look at his All right, so it looks like upon landing on your portfolio, we've got a lot going on here, but I will say I'm not even gonna scroll down right now. I'm just gonna give you some feedback um, from what I see. So you, there's one thing that you have to understand about recruiters and uh, art directors when they're looking at a portfolio is that we were environment artists before. We were character artists before. We were prop artists before. We were juniors before. So we, after working in a studio for a number of years, when you get to the, the role of about a recruiter, you've probably been in, this, in the industry for about 10 plus years. And so we have eyes like hawks. So if you're making mistakes in your um, cover image, we'll, we'll see them right away. And the mistake that you're making is that you have very blurry textures in, in this environment piece, right? We also have some very strange looking pixelated detail in some of these assets, very low resolution. So right away, as a recruiter, I can see that. I can see that you're making that your right from your cover image looks very low res. So as a result of that, I might just not even want to look, continue looking, or I might just take a quick glance and then move on to the next person because you're making those mistakes. So that's why it's important to know what the industry standard workflows are and where you're making those mistakes so you don't make them so that when you apply to studios, we're not seeing the mistakes. So... I think like the cover image could be greatly improved by learning what those industry standard techniques are, right? So uh, just kind of scrolling down here. Um, again, I would avoid, this is what I meant in the presentation when I said avoid using videos or any players right at the top because we generally don't have patience or time to click through them and look at them, right? Unless you really, really impress us. So I would suggest you put the images first. Um, judging from your images, they also look like they need a lot of work. It looks like you don't quite understand the tech, the proper environment art techniques, like uh, smoothing groups even. I can see a lot of faceted edges in your trees here. Um, and it looks like you're, using, you're not using tileable textures in your environments, which is what the industry standard uh, workflow is for, for these environments. So... I'm not sure about that. Like it looks, they look like very low resolution. So that's why I'm kind of guessing. 
But um, and again, like avoid use, doing the mistake of having your objects floating in the middle of space on a on a, a gradient background. Actually, build a little scene for it. And it looks like lighting is another area where you really need to focus a lot of time and attention. Uh, so it looks like you joined the Ubisoft NXT. And I would say like overall, looking at your images, just a little bit too much contrast, right? It's hard to see things, um, dial down the contrast just a little bit more. But um, overall, it looks like you really need just help and work with understanding what, how to use tileable textures effectively and how to create high fidelity environments, which is what we focus on in the course is high fidelity environments. So yeah. That's where I think you need to do most of your work is lighting, texturing, and uh, and things like that. So yeah, there's a comment, Angel, that you made. I'm interested in having. I'm interested, but I have some questions. So if you guys have any questions about the course or the program and you want to ask me directly like offline, you can email me. I'm just going to leave my email address here. And you can send me a personal email and I'll, if you have any like specific questions about the course, take my email down and just write me an email and I'll, I'll get back to you right away. Uh, so Jacob says, thanks for the feedback. Ethan says, cool, thanks. Angel, thanks for the feedback. Um, Ehab says, built the car and the environment and build the tool in Unreal as well. Cool, man. So show your cars. Like, show off your cars individually because they're really excellent models, right? So you definitely want to make some individual portfolio pieces there. And so... Um, All right, sure, thank you. All right, so Angel says you you already signed up, so congratulations and welcome to Game Arts Academy. That's I think uh, a really great um, decision that you made, and you're really going to get a lot out of our community. And we look re really look forward to working with you. I think you got some great base skills to build up to build on, and so yeah, welcome Angel to Game Arts Academy. And you have yeah, make sure you make those car renders. Um, so we got about one minute left, guys. So uh, the button's still up there on the chat. So if you want those um, bonuses, um, just, you know, if you want those bonuses, then just like, you know, click on that offer right now and you can get access to the school right away. Um, you also have about three more days to jump on that price. So you have some time to think about it, some time to maybe ask me some questions personally offline or some time to like, um, you know, talk to your parents or your spouse about like getting the funds together to join. It's a really great opportunity to get in super, super cheap at a very high quality program with a great community of people and some very nice supportive services that will really help you to take that next step in your career. If you're serious, if you're truly serious about stopping spinning your wheels and making this um, a viable career for yourself in the near future and within the next year, so. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this presentation. It's four o'clock right now. We're going to stick to our word and wrap up right on the four o'clock mark. So, um, and so Jacob, if you said, so those of you who say like, I would really like to join, but I can't afford it. Email us. We can work something out. Uh, we, we definitely don't want money to be the barrier to entry to our program. We can always negotiate something. So if that's the position you find yourself in then take down my email address. It's right there. Email me and we can work something out together. And, uh, and you know, so thanks everybody for joining me on the presentation. I wish you the best in your career and your aspirations. One thing that I will leave you guys off with is um, don't give up. Like if this is something that you're truly passionate about and uh, you really love, always work consistently on your projects. Don't give up. Make sure you're always working on the next thing. Make sure you're always learning and growing. Um, it's only the students in our program that don't give up and that really, really want this that end up getting jobs in AAA studios. So, um, so that's pretty much it. Have, everybody have a great weekend and um, we'll, yeah, nice meeting all of you.
you got again some really great portfolios thank you guys for joining and uh feel free to email me if you have any other questions have a good weekend guys <laughs>